Hey everyone, it's Matthew Kent. Thanks for joining me. This is Theology on the Ground and the Daily Thought from my quiet time. Today, kind of, uh, I made an interesting connection between what I read today in 1 Peter chapter 3 and what I read yesterday in John chapter 6. And it's between two uh, different topics that you might not necessarily always connect together, but that should in fact be connected. And those would be the will of God and the assurance of salvation that a believer has, meaning the fact that uh, once a person is truly saved, truly regenerated, truly born again, truly becomes a child of God, uh, they don't ever at any point unbecome a child of God. And it's this idea that, you know, those who um, get saved, God continues to grow them and conform them to the image of Christ, we call it sanctification, and then that ultimately he will glorify them. So uh, the verse from 1 Peter is just one verse, but it's the uh, implications that are important. 1 Peter 3.17, For it is better to suffer for doing good, if that should be God's will, and there's our phrase, God's will, than for doing evil. And the context here explicitly, and you only need to go one verse back to, to see it, is, is persecution. So suffer um, in this verse, for it is better to suffer, means it is better to be persecuted unjustly by unbelievers if that should be God's will. Now, what's interesting is in one sense, we know it's not God's will for unbelievers to unjustly persecute you. That's not what he wants. And so, and I'm coming out with a blog post about this. This is a, a recognition that there are two things that might be accurately described as the will of God. In a sense, there's two different wills of God. And in theology, you call this uh, the will of command and the will of decree. The will of command is what God wants, right? So he says, don't murder. And so that's that's his will. He doesn't want you to murder. He wants you to refrain from murder. It's his will of command. But he, while he enforces it in terms of judgment that, you know, murders are going to be judged, he doesn't enforce it in terms of uh, compliance. So he's not going to force you to comply. You can break the rule that he gives or not. You can violate his will or not. Um, you know, it's sort of up to you. But then there's a sense that God is sovereign over all things. And so, you know, as Romans 8, 28 says, he's working, he's got a plan. He's working all things together for good to those who love him and are called according to his purpose. So we call this the will of decree, that God is sovereignly in control of everything that happens. And so... Uh, it might be his will to have certain things happen um, that are not glorifying to him, that are not pleasing, and eventually he'll use them for good. Eventually he'll be glorified in them through judging them or, or something to, of that effect. Um, but both wills are, are clearly seen in the Bible, and so this uh, 1 Peter 3 is obviously an indication of his will of decree because his will of command would say that God is not for, he does not like, uh, when believers are unjustly persecuted. But that might be his will to refine the believers is to um, have unbelievers unjustly persecute them. And so Peter is saying, well, that, that's good, that's better. We, we should rather uh, suffer for doing good, <clears throat> if that should be God's will, than, to, um, <clears throat> than for doing evil. So the connection there, though, is uh, from John chapter 6. This was from yesterday. Uh, that I read, and I didn't go over this one yesterday, but it was in my reading yesterday. And so I'll just read this section here, and we'll talk about it. And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. So again, um, pointing to the need to believe in Jesus. But I said to you that you have seen me, and yet you do not believe. So he's talking to a group of people who have seen the feeding of the 5,000, but who still don't believe. And Jesus is calling them out on their unbelief. Then Jesus says this, All that the Father gives me will come to me, and whoever comes to me I will never cast out. For I have come down from heaven not to do my own will, there's our word, but the will of him who sent me, God the Father. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I should lose nothing of all that he has given me, but raise it up on the last day. For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who looks on the Son and believes in him should have eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. Now, what kind of will is this that is being talked about? Because here's the thing. 
if you are somebody who believes that you can lose your salvation as a christian that you can be genuinely born again and then genuinely unborn again or whatever that would be called you have to say that here this is god's will of command and that's all, all even if they don't distinguish will of command versus will of decree that's ultimately where they will go uh you'll say something effective okay well god wills this to happen but not everything that god wills to happen happens right god says don't murder so that's god's will murder happens so it's sort of like god's will of command god commands it but you can break it now the thing that we have to recognize here is this is not god's will to unregenerate sinners this is not god saying to a bunch of unbelievers this is my will that you do this this is the eternal covenant of the father and the son this is god this is jesus saying about god the father that hey god the father has a will for me that i lose nothing of all that he has given you meaning obviously in the context of believers so in other words the, the real question is not can a christian lose their salvation it's can jesus lose a christian and the answer is no because that's not the will of the father and you say well the, the will of the father you know god's will of command and, and it gets violated god's will of command does get violated and doesn't always come true but god is sovereign over all things and there's another way that we speak of his will it's his will of decree and the eternal covenant of redemption between god the father and the son um, it is in a sense part of his will of command it's something that he wants but it's part of his will of decree it's something that he's going to have happen right that the father's not going to set up rules for the son son i want you to do these things that you can't do um no it's a it's a here's what's going to happen this is my will and oftentimes the um the decreed will of God is what we call the secret will of God. It's, it's not something that's revealed to us. It's not something that we know, um, but sometimes it is. And you, so you think about prophecy. God says, this is what I'm going to do. Prophecy would be an instance of the decreed will of God being revealed. And this would be another instance where God says, hey, this is, Jesus says, this is how the Father and I relate to each other. Th this is uh, our will. This is what we do and so i do what the father's will is and here's the father's will so here's what i'm going to do is what i'm going to do um, and so this to me is a uh, beautiful and helpful um, picture of what's going on in the interworkings of the trinity and it's a comforting knowing that hey uh it's not up to you to keep yourself saved like this is uh, you're not relying on yourself, you're relying on Jesus, which is fitting because, right, you're trusting in Jesus for your salvation anyway, and so you're trusting in Jesus to keep your salvation. Um, so anyways, hopefully these thoughts were useful. Like I said, I've got a blog post coming out, uh, pretty lengthy, about 3,000 words on uh, the will of command, the will of decree, and how you can know the, the will of God for your life, which is a huge question that, that people ask. So look out for that. Um, Tentatively, I think I have it scheduled for coming out this next Monday, so you'll have to wait the weekend. You can get excited about it. Thank you so much for watching. Lord willing, I'll see you guys again tomorrow uh, with another video.